All right, in this video, I'm gonna give you five great tips to improve your landscape painting compositions. All right, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. If at any point during this video, you're liking it, you're like, hey, I like what this guy's saying. He's making a lot of sense. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I release another video. All right, let's just jump on into it with tip number one, which is don't try and put too much into your composition. You might have a photo or be out painting and you got this scene. And it's got so many cool things in it, your mountains, your water, land, trees, this and that. And it's all great. And you just want to put it all into the painting. Now you need to choose one element that I like to call the star of the scene. Who is the scene star? What is the painting going to be about? And make sure that it's clear that element is the main focus of the painting. And now all the other things that are great about the scene, they can still be in there, but they need to be there to support the star of the painting. For example, when I was out plein air painting and I saw this scene, there was so much that I liked about it. I really liked the trees up here and just the shapes that were happening. I really liked the dappled light in the grass. I liked this boat shop where they were building kayaks. I really liked this bench. I thought this bench was really cool, especially when light was hitting it. It looked great. I also liked these warm streaks of color from light on this grass on this hill and just the, the angle that they were at. I thought it was really cool. And probably the worst thing I could have done is cropped the image like this, where they all kind of share an equal space and they're all featured kind of an equal amount. And if they're all equal, then none of them stand out as unique or impressive. So I need to choose one. For instance, this would be a great composition featuring the boat shop. This is featuring more of the treetops. This is featuring the dappled light in the grass. This one, the warm slanted light on the hill. They all can work and that's why a lot of painters will paint the same scene a bunch of times with different compositions or especially plein air painters when they're out painting, they're trying to figure out which composition will work best. They will actually have a sketch pad and they'll do very little itty bitty thumbnails to figure out which composition will work, which one they like better. So it's not gonna always be like 100% clear what the best composition is and you might not even be sure until you sketch it out and see it visually. Some other things you can do is you can get uh, one of those little viewfinders. I had one and I lost it. So now like I'll just use my phone, like I'll take a picture and then crop it to the dimensions on my phone and kind of look at it and be like, oh yeah, I like that composition. Or maybe if I moved it here to this, kind of way for me to get a little preview of what the composition would be like. Now I ended up choosing to feature more of the boat shop. I really liked the bright light on the foliage behind the shop in the way like you could see it through certain holes like inside and just the shapes that it created and the fact that you have pretty much your darkest dark in this barn and your lightest light in these trees right next to each other creates a lot of contrast and a lot of times the area in your painting that has the most contrast is going to be the focal point it's just naturally where your eye is going to go to and i liked how that area was in the barn, which I wanted to make the star of this painting. And you can see, I still have a lot of the other elements that I liked in the scene, but they're just playing a smaller supporting role to the boat shop, which is the main focus, the star. All right, tip number two is don't prevent the viewer from moving around the scene. I feel like a lot of having a good composition is making sure you're not doing certain things. An example of that is you don't wanna have any lines going straight off into the corners of the canvas, either one above or below. It's just when it goes straight into the corner, it's just such a hard directional tool that the eye is gonna just go straight there and their eye is just gonna be shot straight off the canvas. Another similar example is you have uh, a lot of lines or strong lines that are going off the canvas. Try to put something in the way that acts as a buffer or a way to bounce the viewer's eye back into the scene. Also make it easy for the viewer to enter the scene. This could be a path, a shadow, a river, just shapes of any kind that are in the foreground that guide the viewer into the scene. Another thing is don't attract attention to a certain area in a bad way. Like you never wanna have a bunch of lines converging at the same point. It can be very distracting and cause the viewer just to go straight to that or to notice it in a negative way. We want the viewer to notice things about your painting, but we want them to notice like, oh, like that lines up perfectly with that. That's a little too convenient. Kind of like when something happens in the movie that you don't really buy. It's, oh, how convenient. He just happened to forget his cell phone when he went out to that 
cabin in the middle of nowhere. All right, tip number three is don't get distracted with details. Details can make you lose focus on what is important in terms of composition. Composition is all about seeing the big shapes. Every time I paint a landscape, I squint my eyes, which gets rid of detail and it actually gets rid of color too. So I'm just seeing light and dark shapes. And I'm trying to find an interesting pattern of those light and dark shapes. I pretty much start every landscape as if it was an abstract painting. And I'm just dealing with these big abstract shapes. I wanna make sure they're interesting shapes and arranged in an interesting way. And what makes them interesting is that there's a variety of shapes and they're arranged in an interesting way. Starting out with this construction of big light and dark shapes is so important. It's really the foundation of the entire painting. It doesn't matter like how well you paint the painting. If it's painted on top of a foundation of shapes that aren't interesting and aren't arranged in an interesting way, the painting's probably not gonna work. This is why you see really good painters able to pull off scenes that just seem so simple. And you think like, wow, like I never would have thought that kind of scene would be so interesting and be able to be painted so great. All right, tip number four, kind of piggies back off tip number three, which is don't make all of your shapes and spaces in the painting the same size or same distance apart. Whenever you have a series of repeating shapes in your painting, you wanna make sure you vary them up. You also wanna make sure you vary up the spacing between them. This can happen with mountains. It can happen with trees. Just so many different things. It's just that when there's a repetition of the same shape, same distance apart, it draws our eye to it, again, in a negative way. You know, this also goes for big picture stuff. Like you probably wouldn't wanna put your horizon line smack dab in the center of your canvas, dividing your canvas up into two equal sections. I'm always looking at the big shapes and making sure that I'm not repeating the same size shape. You know, even if that shape is like the entire sky or the entire ocean or whatever. You'll be surprised at how much we just subconsciously wanna line things up and make everything perfect and symmetrical and evenly spaced. You just gotta be aware of it and correct yourself when you do it. A lot of times when I come back into the studio with a plain air painting, I'm like having to make things uneven. I'm just like, wow, like I just subconsciously made this clump of trees like the exact same size as these clump of trees over here. And I'll have to like change one of them. All right, tip number five is don't feel like you need to paint every single thing that you see. There's a famous quote by some old master landscape painter, I forget who said it, but it was like, uh, God didn't create perfect compositions in nature for lousy artists. And it's true. And I know like it probably feels scary to like move things or say like, oh, I'm going to paint this differently. At least I felt that way when I was starting to paint. Like I didn't fully understand. It. I was like, what? Like I can move stuff, you know, like won't I, I won't know how to paint it if I move it and the light changes and this and that and strike. You just got to kind of dive in and do it and really be thinking about ways that you can enhance the scene. You know, this could be taking something out. This could be putting something in. It could be changing the shape of something. It could be simplifying a certain area. As a painter, one of your skill sets is knowledge of composition and what works and what's pleasing to the eye and what you can do to emphasize the parts you want to emphasize. So if like you're looking at a scene, you're like, oh man, it would have been really better if this path went this way instead of that way, make it go that way. If you're trying to crop it, you're like, oh man, like I can't get this barn in there along with this tree. It's just too far away. I can't move the tree over. No one's going to know. What they will know is that your painting doesn't have a great composition because they'll be able to feel it. So if it's going to make your composition better, Go ahead, move things, change things, do what you need to do. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I also got another great video waiting for you right here. And if you really want to end your oil painting frustration and actually make paintings that you're proud of, highly suggest checking out my Foundations of Oil Painting course. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.